All right, we head over to Ohio now. We're right now in the southern part of the state, a manhunt is still going on for an escaped inmate, while four others who also escaped are now back in custody. Authorities saying this all started with a woman wanting to be with her fiancé. And correspondent Kelly Beeson is here. Kelly, this is one of three high-profile inmate escapes that have been documented across the country in just the past seven weeks. Yeah, you're right, Nicole. In April, we followed the escape and capture of inmate Casey White, a very high-profile case. He was assisted by an Alabama corrections officer. An 11-day manhunt ensued, ending with a police chase through Indiana. The corrections officer was pronounced dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound, and Casey White is now back behind bars. Then, just last month, an inmate in Texas, 46-year-old Gonzalo Lopez, stabbed the driver of a transport bus after killing Killing five people days later, Lopez himself was shot and killed by police. And this past weekend, five prisoners, as you mentioned, being held for nonviolent drug offenses, escaped from an Ohio correctional facility. The suspects accused of aiding in the escape are 32 year old Allie Angelo and her ex husband, Matthew Sladen. Now, the sheriff's office reporting Angelo had come to help her new fiance, Jeffrey Randall Fields, break free. At this moment, all inmates, Angelo and Sladen, are now in police custody. Aside from this man, 46-year-old Charles Comberger, who is still on the run. Today, we spoke with Robert Allen, a professor of Homeland Security at Tulane University, who says the facility where it happened in Ohio likely had low-level security, and hopping a fence would be entirely possible without too much planning or effort. This is not like a, a major federal penitentiary or a major state penitentiary where you got dogs and guards and towers and guns and barbed wire and all the other stuff. If they were trustees or something like that, or they were on a work release program, literally you could walk off until, and not really be accounted for until roll call. Now, Allen predicts the sheriff's office will have Comberger in custody in the coming days. And while all of the escaped inmates in Ohio were low-level nonviolent drug offenders, they will now be facing additional charges. Nicole. All right, Kelly, thank you for that. Joining me now is Scioto County Sheriff David Thurlman. Sheriff, thank you so much for being with us tonight. My pleasure. All right, so let's first start with the manhunt for that final escaped inmate. Where are you on finding him, and should residents in that area be concerned? We have uh, cooperation with the Ohio State Highway Patrol and all the other local uh, law enforcement agencies. Uh, the photos out, the residents are aware of who it is. Uh, so we are looking hard uh, for this individual. He is from the Wilmington, uh, Ohio area. Uh, right. So they have been notified as well. Okay, so so plenty of people notified here. How are you warning them, and and are you telling people to take more precautions given what happened recently in Texas? Uh, at present, we are on uh, all the news uh, outlets advising people of who uh, is out there, and uh, they are low-level uh, drug offenders uh, and nonviolent. Yeah, certainly a, a difference there. Um, you know, Sheriff, we just heard from Kelly Beeson there that um, it would have been simple potentially for these inmates to just jump the fence. So talk to us about how they escaped in the first place. What happened? Uh, the ex or the fiance, she came down with her ex-husband. Uh, they stopped on the way down, purchased uh, some bolt cutters, I believe it's from a Walmart on the way down. Uh, they, uh, the ex-husband threw the bolt cutters over the fence line. Uh, the fiance picked up the bolt cutters and uh, cut a hole through the fence. And as this was happening, employees from the facility was uh, calling my 911 dispatch center, uh, advising us what was happening and also to contact the Ohio State Highway Patrol uh, since it is uh, state property and they are in charge of the investigation. Well, it seems to be a quick, quick reaction from law enforcement there. You know, and Sheriff, there have been multiple high-profile prison escapes recently. Obviously, yes. this is a jail escape, very different. But, you know, from Alabama to Texas, some turning deadly, you know, for those involved and, and innocent Absolutely. bystanders. Right. Sheriff, what do you think needs to change to prevent this type of thing from happening? With the, this particular facility, uh, I don't know if there will be uh, too much uh, there need to be some discussion on the protocols on notifying the public. Uh, like I said, it is a state property, but it is a privately ran uh, facility 
to working on treatment for uh, the inmates. Well, Sheriff David Thurman, we certainly appreciate you taking the time with us tonight, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.